Uh, we'll open the house up to questions, and I'll try to circulate around the room and uh, broadcast back up the questions to David. Can I see your hands? Over here? Yeah. Hi. I'm pretty skilled at this snare. Uh -huh. So I'm just wondering, as a conservationist, when you consider the destruction, mm -hmm. what keeps you from What keeps me from despair? Well, the, the certain knowledge that... Paralyzing, for one thing. And if I'm in despair, I won't do anything. Um, that great Frida Kahlo line, you know, used to drink to drown my sorrows, but now they've learned how to swim. Um, the most, the, I mean, my mantra for the last five years, six years, um, has been Mother Teresa's line, we can do no great things, only small things with great love. I just, that's always within reach. It's always manageable. It can be something really small. And it's something as small as the smile you just gave me, you know, which is nice, you know. And uh, um, that keeping things defined in terms of what I know I can actually do, hopefully with some skill or with some love or some affection, some warmth, um, that keeps me from despair. Uh, also, just as the story I told, you know, about, you know, yelling, why don't you do it, and the, you know, and I... You know, I think sometimes in our despair we don't ask for help. And I hate to come on like the evangelist DJ Dee, but I think sometimes, you know, um, maybe asking makes a difference, at least starts a conversation. Uh, that's a tricky business. I mean, I'm, I would, I'm just not equipped or trained to stand in a, you know, thing that looks this much like a pulpit talking about these matters. I mean, I hope, to, I hope to spend the rest of my life making it up so truly that maybe some of it will happen that way. I'm going back to my fiction writing life from now on. This is, uh, this is the kind of toad-like character, uh, the evangelist DJD's last wild ride. Um, but um, yeah, I think small concrete things. Um, I give some examples in the book. Um, um, I talked last time I was here in Bend about the wonderful fly fishing school that we started in, in Bellingham in honor of Liam Wood after he died in it just a ridiculous way while fly fishing. Uh, pipeline explosion, you know, body so burned that they passed it a hundred times thinking it was driftwood. Uh, there's a beautiful school that we started that teaches conservation and fly fishing right from the start. And something as simple as teaching somebody how to cast is a lot of fun for me. Um, maybe more fun than standing in a big auditorium and <laughs> holding forth, you know. And, uh, but, um, and we're opening a new branch of the school in, in my hometown of Missoula. And that totally psychs me up because I won't have to drive all the way over to Bellingham spewing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere uh, in order to, to go help out with the school. So, you know, little stuff like that. I mean, conservation, conservationists do a lot of small things and they add up. Sometimes just encouraging each other in dark times adds up too. So. Another that question? Was, that was a <laughs> Anybody else have a question? I do. I come back to Oregon a lot. My son lives in Eugene. I just visited him. Stayed up way too late. I, I can feel my voice leaving. Uh, but yeah, I, I still love Oregon, and I feel very much at home in Oregon, Washington, Montana. You know, um, when I do these book tours, they ask me to go uh, do a national tour, and I just get in my car and drive to the same eight or ten cities over and over and say, no thanks. <laughs> Mr. Smith is never going to Washington. Uh, um, I like it here. It feels like a big enough country. It's complex and beautiful. Bend is changing so fast. I mean, all, you know, I first drove through Bend in 1960. Every time I come, there's a new restaurant, and the food just gets better and better. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I love Oregon. It's great. Drove up to McKenzie today. You know, geez. Walked on the Metolius today. Geez. You know, <laughs> this is a great spot. Another question? You can just fire it. You don't have to. Yeah, go ahead, sir. But we both teach, and we both wanted to teach your story of community 
You have it. <laughs> to me, that, that's a big okay, What it's about, in my mind, is what it feels like, what it kind of feels like spiritually to write a novel. That's really what it's about. Or to create a great work of art. It's about that getting lost thing in a way that's so complete that you're, it almost morphs your personality. That guy goes through several per, uh, you know, transformations in writing that story. and I, I'd be honored if you taught it. I really liked that story, and my, my editor at, at Doubleday really liked it too, but most people are like, w what kind of weird sci-fi is this? An interesting, since you're going to teach it, I'll, I'll tell you, when I wrote that story, I lived in the same neighborhood in Portland as Ursula K. Le Guin, and um, I woke up like at five in the morning, and that story was beginning to tell itself, and it was very foggy, and I just thought, hmm, this is an Ursula K. Le Guin story, but her muse got lost in the fog and ended up at my house. So, so I sat down and wrote the story and then I sent it to Ursula and she wrote back and said, I think that was, that was Borges. Uh, that was, that was uh, Borges Muse. That wasn't me or you. <laughs> it was kind of fun. Yeah, 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 the cry in the desert. Yeah, that's what we're all doing. Yeah. Yes. Well, just just the whole idea of oh well, yeah, the question was trying to tie um, the idea of the extreme simplicity of a bird's life uh, to the teachings of the Gospels. You know the the, the lines we consider the fowl of the fowls of the air, um, and the whole idea of those who neither reap nor sow, um, and um, give no thought for the. I mean, they stay, they live in the eternal now. I think birds live in the eternal now. Um, that's why they're such good companies. They they don't have a past or future. They're just they're just right here all the time, and they I think they remind us of that. They've just always really moved me. Um, I don't know, you know, you, how, how the heck little tiny, you know, juncos survive the winters we have in Montana. And, you know, uh, there's places in Montana where uh, it's a kind of nut hatch. They all pile into the same hole in the cottonwood trees. And there'll sometimes be four or five hundred of them all together inside the hole, um, keeping each other alive. Uh, they have to do that to survive. It's, that's pretty amazing that they figured that out. Um, I lived in a house in northwest Portland for a few years. Uh, we had chimney swifts. And most of the year they wouldn't be there, and there'd just be a night where you'd be sitting on the back deck, and all of a sudden chimney swifts would be 20 feet over the chimney, and they'd just start dr dropping one after another until 70 or 80 of them were in, inside this old disused chimney, and you could open a, uh, an iron door down in the basement and hear this fluttering sound that 70 chimney swifts made and, and you know fowler ropes are flying from the south pole to the north pole I mean 12,000 mile migration you know uh, stuff like that is fascinating so I just think they're magic I think they're almost you know almost angelic maybe whatever that means <laughs> maybe one more question and we'll call it good yes so in the in the spirit of a, a churchless sermon, this is sort of a commercial, I guess. <laughs> I'd be interested in discussing this book and, and uh, the ideas in it and the thoughts it, it's going at us. And, uh, that's cool. I mean, that's exactly what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that this make some openings where there's a lot of walls. The wonderful line of uh, the fly fishing philosopher of Missoula, Henry Bugby, said, the tenets of scripture are meant to be occasions for wonder, not the termination of it. And that wonderful statement of Anne Lamott um, about the opposite of faith being certainty, not doubt. Um, just trying to bring some, some openness and some lightheartedness to, to, to the questions that have become, that are being treated in a very grim way. And if that c caused, uh, you know, some little study group around that book here, that'd be cool. Thank you for inviting your community to do that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'd be the best. I think I'll just end on that note. That's really great, and I'm losing my voice. Thank you very Big much. Big round of applause.
Uh, David will be signing books in the auditorium shortly. We'll meet you out there. Thank you.